What's up everybody? We're going to be working with Photoshop today. Uh, we're going to be working on a sports banner, uh, like a senior sports, you know, for high schoolers, maybe uh, collegiate level. Um, a lot of photographers and graphic designers, sign makers, you know, there's three or four different types of people that get asked to make things like senior sports banners. Uh, typically that falls in the photographers, but uh, I am a sign maker. I do print signs and banners and shirts, uh, and I get asked about doing it frequently or setting up artwork to do it. Uh, so basically what we're going to be doing is, is opening up Photoshop, blank document, and putting all the elements together to make a sports banner. Uh, so let's take a look at some examples. I just have Google Images and I typed in senior sport banners. Uh, so let's take a look at what some people are doing. Uh, you know, I like I said, this is just a Google image search. I don't know who you know any of these people are or anything, um, but this gives you the idea of uh, of what we're working with here. Uh, so, with that being said, let's cut the crap and get right into it. Um, I do everything in inches. This is going to be printed, uh, so I'm not necessarily worried about pixels. So we'll go over to inches, and uh, you know, I don't know what size, uh, but I'm thinking somewhere. I think the last ones I did was two foot by three foot. So let's just do that. 24 inches wide, 36 inches high. Uh, this would be printed. So 300 DPI would be preferred, but you know this actually isn't going to be. This is just for demonstration purposes. So let's just drop it to 125 grayscale or uh, RGB will be fine. And here's our blank document. So uh, let's drag in um, our picture here. This is. A photo by a local high school student here in town. So his mom took this photo. His mom does a little bit of photography. This is just something that she sent to me on Messenger. So uh, it's going to work pretty good for what we got here. So uh, first thing I'm going to do, this is just a basic photograph. So before I ever even put this photo into the, the document, I'm going to go to image adjustments and we're just going to kind of uh, beef up this photo a little bit, put some detail on it with HDR toning. So that was this image adjustments and then HDR toning. And uh, HDR toning only works when you have, you know, a flattened uh, layer here. So uh, if you have multiple layers, you wouldn't be able to use this option. So if you try to use this option, it's grayed out. Make sure that you know your your layers are just one uh, flattened image. So uh, you can see as soon as I opened up the uh, as soon as I opened up this, there was a change in the image. Uh, so we're just going to kind of come down here to detail and slide that up you can see like there's some graininess going on if I went all the way I mean that's just too much I mean there's just too much going on there so we're just looking for a happy medium and uh, let's click smooth edges that steals too much and let's bring up the strength a little bit and this all depends on the image I mean what these numbers here these are only going to be good for this image um, if we did any other sort of image you know it's just trial and error you got to mess with it to try to find that happy medium this particular image though this is what we're ending up with um, and we'll drop the shadow so you can see whenever I did that there was a change in shadows there I'm just that'll make these darker areas even more dark uh, vibrance will kick up a little bit just to kind of make some of these colors pop Saturation, you don't. I mean, we'll we'll just see what happens here. I don't want to turn your skin orange, which is usually what happens. Like if I go all the way over, now he looks like an oompa loompa. So uh, once again, we're just trying to find the happy medium, and uh, I think that looks pretty good. So let's. I mean, the reason we did that is we just want to beef up this image a little bit, so it just doesn't look like a you know a photograph. You know, uh, photographs typically uh, desaturate 
the colors that we see and that we expect to see in a really good design. So just a basic photograph usually needs some sort of tweaking just to get the actual look that what we're going for. Um, so now we need to select him uh, from this whole image, get rid of these lockers uh, and the floor and the ceiling. Uh, you know, this is a lot easier if there is a background that's solid or clear or white or something, you know, to, to, to define the edge really easy. But with Photoshop CC and the tools that are in Photoshop CC, we're, we're not going to have too big of a problem. So let's jump into selecting our ball player here. And what we're going to do is, all right, we got our tool selection and we're going to go to the quick selection tool so uh, that's w on the keyboard and you know if it doesn't come up automatically let's say some something else comes up like the magic wand tool just hold shift then w we have another tool w again and now we have the quick selection tool uh, so what this is going to allow us to do is just come in here and and uh, grab a lot of this actually you know what what would be better uh, what might work better actually is the select subject tool so let's try that and see how that works out first uh, there's several different ways to select objects in Photoshop you can use the lasso tool you can use the polygonal lasso tool you can use the quick select tool that I was going to try or you can do the select subject tool that's under the quick select tool there's like of several different ways to select things in Photoshop but we've we've hit the select subject button it's now rendered and we have our marching ants it did a pretty decent job of, of getting around our ball player here and uh, you can see that we've missed some areas uh, where it confused the locker handles it also looks like going up into his armpit and then his forearm here uh, wasn't perfectly selected but that's no big deal uh, we're actually going to zoom in a little bit and uh, I mean, it looks like we do have a pretty pretty decent selection here uh, so let's go ahead and hit M on the keyboard right click layer via copy turn off our background layer because now we've you know just copied our selection over and this is what we're left with so not bad starting out with there is some areas it looks like that's gonna need some touch up look like it's kind of faded out there a little bit so uh, let's select and load selection okay and so what that's going to do is it's going to select everything that's in this layer uh, and I'm going to go up here to the polygonal lasso tool I'm old school and use the polygonal lasso tool so uh, I'm sure there's some new kids on the block that's what are you doing so um, we're going to hit alt on the keyboard We're going to hit Alt on the keyboard and hold it. And you can see that now that I've on my cursor here, the polygonal lasso tool has a minus sign next to it. And that's because we're going to subtract this. So we're just going to kind of start. Actually, let's start right off here. And now that we've made our first click, we don't have to hold Alt anymore. We can let Alt off the keyboard. And we're just going to kind of follow his neckline here. And we're gonna so, so now once I made that connection, it deleted the selection that I made. So that's the point of using the Alt button. If I just use the polygonal lasso tool, uh, you know, it would just like right right there, it would just create a new selection. Uh, so holding Alt again, let's go ahead and get rid of this. Move up here same deal hold alt we're gonna go right over his hairline here kinda of following his contours and get rid of that uh, and I'm just gonna kinda of smooth out some of these little bumpy areas here that's not really what we're looking for And right here behind his ear you can see some of the locker still remaining and we want that negative space where his hair line goes behind his ear looks more natural um, looks like there's a little piece right here we can get rid of real quick. And then these areas up in here. Holding Alt to deselect these areas. Uh, then of course 
his arm here. There, like I said, there are other ways to to do this. We could go in to the select and mask option, which we might just go ahead and do here. Let's uh, just to show you just a variety of of things we can do. Um, even though I think I pretty well got everything I wanted to do, uh, you can go to this uh, hitting W again and select and mask. And this is going to bring up some options here. I believe this used to be called Refine Edge. But, uh, you know, there's some extra options here, smoothing things out, uh, the, the radius of the selection. But I really think we've got most of what we need here selected. So let's hit OK. Um, and those are tools and options that you can mess around with on your own image. Uh, to see what works best. So now we have uh, our ball player selected. The things that uh, we did not want selected are now unselected, like the handles here for the lockers. And uh, we're going to hit M on our keyboard, right click, select inverse. So now everything that's outside of our ball player is now selected and just hit delete. So we're going to deselect. And now we have our totally cropped out, clean uh, ball player. And let's cut him from this document and paste him into our actual banner here. So we're going to paste him in. We'll probably have to scale him up a little bit, quite a bit. Um, obviously he's going to lose some detail, but this is just for educational purposes here. Um, if you have to blow an image up that much, obviously detail is going to get lost. So let's kind of position him here to where he's not like way down here looking awkward or anything. We want to make sure that he's got proper look room and, and is not cut off in any awkward position. Um, I think that looks decent. And so let's name this TK. His name's TK. Um, now, let's add in our background element. Our background element is going to be an empty basketball court. I found this on a Google image search, and it was uh, available for reuse. So it wasn't hopefully anybody's image. We should be fine. We're going to drag that in. There's our ball court, just your basic high school looking ball court, nothing special. We're going to move that behind TK here, maybe kind of position it to where... Now I'm just going with the flow on this, I have not, I don't know if I specified that or not I have not actually planned this image out at all I've just got a couple different things and we're just going with the flow so this is coming up with a design from ground zero basically so uh, let's rasterize this so that we're no longer uh, so we can actually do some stuff with it um, let's desaturate it so I'm gonna hold control shift and U let's make the background black and white and I can see that there's some fuzzy pixel action going on here so let's just clean that up I probably should have spent a little bit more time in the uh, select and mask department but that's okay like I said this is just for educational purposes and going back to the basketball court let's make it a little darker so I did control L to bring up the levels and I'm moving this slider over ever so nicely that's the darks and then the highlights I don't know it's not too bad um, let's go behind our ball player here I'm going to double click on the thumbnail of the layer, bring up the layer styles or the blending options or the layer effects. They've had a lot of different names. People call them a lot of different things. But uh, let's try a drop shadow on him here and just spread this out a little bit. I kind of like the blue. Uh, obviously, it's Blue Jays. Uh, our local high school is R-U-L-H, and we'll incorporate all of the school branding uh, into this. I'm not really digging the 
light blue. Maybe with a multiply to darken it up a little bit. Okay, now let's bring in our next element, which would actually be the Blue Jay logo uh, that RULH uses here in my town of Ripley. Oh, what do you know? It's got uh, no white in it. So let's fix that. Let's rasterize the layer. And let's add a stroke. Seems as though there's a hidden line around there. I wonder what that's about. So, same deal. I just went to the layer styles, added a stroke, outside stroke, white, because that's what we're missing in this is white. And you can see it didn't fill up all the spaces. Uh, so, just for a quick fix, let's go ahead and rasterize this layer style, flatten that stroke out. I'm going to add a new layer underneath of it. And just real quick, I'm going to open up the brush tool with, by pressing B, or you can come over here and select it here. And I'm going to right click, increase the diameter of that brush. This is just a real quick solution here. And uh, I'm going to select white. I'm going to hold the Alt key when your brush is selected and you hold Alt, or uh, I believe it's the Option key on Mac. I don't use Macs. I never did. But uh, um, we'll select white, and we'll just kind of come in here and in these spots. Not for sure why it was transparent in the file that I had, but that's what you deal with. So anyways, now we have two different layers. Let's select both of these and merge them together. Now we're all filled in and we have a little stroke around them. And I think right there might be all right. Let's bring it behind him. I wonder if this would look better over here than maybe the ball goal right there. And let's kind of blend this into the background by dropping the opacity down uh, so it's not so prominent but still noticeable. So now let's get into what to do now? Should we add his name? Should we add R-U-L-H? Let's add R-U-L-H. I'm thinking maybe in this area, similar to this, like where it's kind of in the background a little bit. Um, so I'm going to hit T to bring up the text tool, and uh, I'm actually going to do Shift T to make it a vertical text tool. And uh, let's say right here, And let's look for an athletic font. I'm thinking freshman. Oh, I'm pretty sure I have a font named freshman. Yeah, it's kind of like a collegiate looking. And my text options over here, I've got 76% on text height. Let's make that 100. And beef this up. Let's bring it behind him. So, because always, even if it's not like right behind him, which I like how that looks, I like how the foreground subject matter covers up elements. That looks cool. Uh, that's always like a really satisfying look your customers like. Um, let's see what this looks like with no stroke or nothing. Just kind of. No. Okay, so let's add a stroke to this. Same deal. Uh, we can double click or right click and go to blending options. It's going to bring up the same menu. And let's start adding some strokes. So as soon as I turned on the strokes there, um, all the settings from when I did the Blue Jay logo are still there. So let's turn it to black instead of white. Bring it down to about right there. Let's add another stroke. And this time, we're going to pull the blue off of his Blue Jay um, thing here. So let's select that. 
and let's make this stroke a little bit larger. So now we have two strokes. We have the black that separates uh, the white and the blue. Of course, we could just have white and blue, uh, which would look fine, but, you know, me personally, um, I got a lot of my printing start doing race car wraps, and race car wraps, their sponsors, their numbers, they usually have, like, a thousand strokes on them. I, it, they're just an unbelievable amount of outlines and strokes on race car wraps, so it's still a habit of mine to put in my design elements lots of strokes. So, uh, so anyways, there's different types of strokes. If you've never used the uh, stroke function, uh, you know, outside, this basically means uh, outside of the letter here is going to have the stroke. Inside means inside the letter is going to have the stroke. And then center means the stroke is positioned over the, uh, over the center. So it affects what the underlying letters look like by what type of stroke you select. So let's hit OK on that. We'll try that again. I don't know. I don't know. I also don't like that these two blues are different. Um, so let's do this. Let's make this blue J circle layer 100%. Let's double click our stroke that's blue, which is this one, and go back to color. And we're going to pull it off of this. So now these two blues now match instead of these two blues and for our opacity let's do 65 and for the logo we'll do the same thing I don't know what it was before and might need to be a little bit more let's try just 50 alright now Maybe move him over a little bit. Oh, you know it would be cool. Because he is a senior this year. Would be to maybe add 2020. Like I said, we're just going with the flow on this. So you're seeing how it comes together. I don't know about the 2020. I don't want to have too many elements on there. You don't want stuff to be too busy with information. If if things are going to be busy, it's better to have busy effects or elements than it is to have busy information. Because if you have busy information, it might be too hard to read or too much going on for somebody to, to care to want to read. So... Um, now let's make his name an area for his name and this is going to be on top of him all the other elements are behind him so I use the square marquee tool and I just kind of made a rectangle from side to side so I started in the gray area here and just kind of pulled to whatever looks nice and uh, we're going to fill it in with a random color for now Ooh, I might need to use that blue again. So let's go ahead and make that 100%. Select this layer. Color overlay this time. So we're just going to change the entire color. Let's pull this blue again, see what that looks like. That might work. So drop shadow. I'm a big fan of drop shadows. We'll make it black. The opacity of no, no. All right, his name is TK Whaley. So let's get our text tool back to normal horizontal text and let's find a cool font to use for the name. I don't have anything in mind. But something cool and like in your face is what we want to shoot for. But I may not have it. 
I should have thought my font selection out a little bit better coming into this. I don't want to use Frozen again. It's good to use the same fonts for some things, but it's also good to you know separate fonts to break up informational elements, um, especially if they don't exactly go together or if you're trying to insinuate certain words. Um, I'm still struggling here to find a cool font. I'm sure some of you watching are like, oh, I've got the greatest font idea. Just use such and such. How about Royster? TK Whaley. It's not exactly in your face. But it might just be enough to get us along here. These are not capitalized, technically. Oh yeah, those are wild looking. Let's skip that. And let's go to our blending options here. Let's try out a drop shadow. And maybe not so fuzzy. Let's bring it in and tighten it up a little bit. Actually, I wonder if we did a stroke. No. No. That's too much. Let's keep it with the drop shadow for now. And I'm going to drop the opacity of the drop shadow so it's not so dark. That's pure black, but we can drop her down a little bit so it's not so prominent. And maybe beef up the size a little bit. Let's just increase the spread. The spread is what's going to change from fuzzy to, you know, really fine, crisp edges. Uh, so if you increase your size, that's going to make it even more fuzzier, but you crank up the spread, and now you've sharpened up and crisped all those edges. So... think we'll roll with that and I really want to have something else on this little, little doodad here the background blue let's maybe add a stroke and then let's make it a gradient possibly So we're just kind of making a gradient of white and gray. So it's not just white, there's a little bit of a flare to it. Now, what else can we add to this? I mean, as, you know, as far as this goes, it looks like we basically have a somewhat done uh, a banner here, a template, if you will. Um, I actually just noticed that this logo needs to be brought back down again. I cranked it up to pull that blue off. And, uh, let's see here. Let's add another element. So, let's add maybe like a halftone gradient just for design purposes coming up from here and going up there. I think that might work. So, let's go to black. And we're going to hit G on our keyboard. This is the fill tool, or the bucket tool. Uh, don't want that, so I'm going to hold Shift and G, Shift and G again, and now we have our gradient tool. I'm going to start at the bottom corner and go towards the top corner. I don't think I'm going to go all the way, though. I think I'm just going to kind of go to maybe his shoulder. Oh, I messed up. need to make a new layer for that. So let's try that again. Go up here. So we've added in the, the gradient of black. 
and now I'm going to hit Control A to select everything in this image. Control X to cut that gradient out, and we're going to File New. The new document size is going to be the exact size of that gradient because we have it copied. Whenever you have something copied, if you don't know this already, whenever you have something copied in your clipboard on your computer, that size will be the size Photoshop generates the new uh, new document. So we'll create and we will paste. There's our gradient that we dropped in. <clears throat> so I'm going to go up here to image, mode, and grayscale, flatten it. And then image mode bitmap. Bitmap will only work if it's in grayscale format. If it's an RGB, you gotta convert it to grayscale or CMYK, gotta convert it to grayscale, then bitmap. We'll hit OK. And uh, I'm thinking a line. And we'll try five degrees or a frequency of five at an angle of 45 degrees. And we'll see what that looks like. That is not what I had in mind. So let's do that again. Mode, bitmap, and let's do negative 45 degrees and a frequency of 3. That's what I had in mind. I mean, it may look like garbage. I don't know. So there's the halftone pattern that was generated. Uh, I will produce a video just on halftones and all the different things you can do with half tones and why they're important and why you need to know how to use and make half tones for design. I love half tones. I use them whenever I can, especially the line half tone. I use it a lot in design elements uh, for a lot of stuff I make from race car wraps to billboards to anything. It's even in my logo. My logo, if you look, uh, um, let's take this mode and bring it back to grayscale because if it's in bitmap we can't select this stuff and use it so let's convert it back to grayscale now it's in a format that we can use and uh, we're just going to hit W on the keyboard and uh, I actually want to use the magic wand tool so we'll hold shift and W there's the magic wand tool and uh, we'll select in black so now that everything is black in the halftone pattern all the halftone is selected. I'm going to hit Control X and cut it out of this document. And then we're going to paste it right back into the layer that we pulled it off of. So now we've kind of got this neat little halftone pattern going on here. And I don't know if I want to make it the blue. Let's try it. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm digging it. I'm digging it, people. All right, so let's just go ahead and chop this up as done. There's obviously more things we can do. There's more things we can change, but the idea is there. We have taken the basic image. We have cut the subject out of the basic image. Uh, we have created the document. We've pasted him in the document. We've created our background elements. Uh, we've you know changed some effects to make sure that our subject matter which is the ball player is front and center and whenever you look at this banner it's like BAM there he is you know you don't get confused with the colors of the background he is and you know the, the subject matter basically um, then we have our school elements the school logo the school name uh, that's kind of hidden in the design they're not as prominent as he is but they are there they're subconsciously noticeable you can see him very easily and uh, of course you know we have his name so with that being said and done we would take this image and uh, obviously most important thing you can do as a uh, person who works with computer software is save that thing because uh, you know sometimes the electric goes out and uh, We'll go to the guide, senior sports banner, and DK Whaley. So now I have this Photoshop document saved. 
what this means is is if you had 15 ball players or I don't, I don't know i never played sports but if you have however many people that are on the ball team you've got pictures of all of them you have this photoshop document now you have the template so all you have to do from here on out is cut out those pictures of each one and change the name of the ball player and doesn't matter if it's volleyball or soccer or cross country or, or bowling or whatever you know the, the all those principles apply uh, you know backgrounds can be whatever they can be abstract backgrounds it could be a blue explosion going on back there or something um, but uh, this is the basics of of using all these different elements to create a sports athletic banner senior photo what have you uh, I do a lot of these a lot I get a lot of requests for them I'm sure a lot of other people do so now you can see how that works how that breaks down and uh, I'm not sure how much exact time we spent on it but it wasn't fairly long so uh, hopefully that helps hopefully uh, you know you take something away from this obviously uh, you know keep tabs on my patreon as I try to release more and more and more of these tutorials uh, the guide for Photoshop and Illustrator um, you know I, I want to create as many different types of things as possible for people to learn and gather from uh, just because I'm a graphic designer and I'm in a small business in a small town and I get requests for unbelievable amounts of jobs and so do all my fellow printers so I'm gonna try to cover as much of this as I can in my patreon I certainly appreciate you joining in for this course hopefully it helped if you have any questions let me know thank you for tuning in and keep your eyes on the next course